Natural disasters and pandemics over the years have made Kyle Stropes realize how reliant we are on grocery stores to be stocked with our foods. He'd like to present his dream of gardenscaping his small lawn, both on the surface and in the air, so that he may hopefully inspire community members to ditch the idea of needing lush green lawns and opt for growing more of their own food. Here's Kyle with Rethinking Your Yard Space. Let's grow. Uh, my dream of gardenscaping actually started when I was at Kansas State University getting my degrees in uh, agronomy, uh, basically studying how farmers do their job, basically, like at an in-depth level. I kept thinking, though, there has to be a simpler way for me to be able to produce my own food at the scale that I needed and not rely upon so much uh, the large-scale operations. It really started in a small studio apartment of mine in Manhattan, Kansas, which I know KU fans boo me all you want, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, I was able to grow quite a bit with what little space I had. It was literally just a concrete pad and gravel lot using potted plants. I was able to get my herbs and, and some spices and fruits and veggies just for what I needed. I graduated from K State, uh, beautiful purple color there. And I knew that wherever I traveled to, I wanted to bring this idea of how small a space do I really need to grow what I need? And thankfully, I came back to Hutchinson because uh, uh, salt hot grad. Again, don't don't hurt me too much for that. But uh, I was able to find a great house and, and a good amount of land for what all I needed to do. Um, not too much land to where it would be a, a huge burden for me to to start in on this project, and also. Uh, a kind of an ingenuity, a, a little bit of space for me to do what I needed to do just as well. Uh, but the first thing that I did was I took soil samples at this, my house that I bought. You don't want to start growing my plants, or I realized I don't want to start growing my plants and have a bunch of lead and other contaminants in the cr crops that I was growing for myself to, uh, to, to eat. Thankfully it checked out just fine in terms of uh, the soil fertility that I had and not, not uh, heavy metals or anything else. But it became the it became an arduous task though because I realized I wanted to do raised beds first. I thought that was a fantastic idea when to do raised beds. However, I had no good way to get dirt in the backyard. So the best way for me to do it was to literally transplant my front yard to my backyard. And it was about 20 to 30 barrel loads of that to produce five beds out of the 15 that I'm looking to do. So that, does, that doesn't do any justice to how much uh, leg work and back work I had to get. But these beds are working now. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm growing quite a bit with just a little, little effort or a little bit of that I have put in. Um, where am I? Oh, um, I've got my strawberries, my sunflowers, my onions, potatoes, a whole plethora of plants growing right now just in these five beds. But as I've, I started delving into this a little bit more, I realized I have to have some management practices to keep producing high volumes of food that I want. One of them is rotating my crops. You can't have strawberries in the same bed all the time. The other one is water resource management. I don't want to keep watering and watering and watering my beds constantly all the time. So I had to find a good resource of mulching, which I found some good straw locally, but one of the better locally produced or locally available resources was wood chips. We actually have a fantastic, I shouldn't say fantastic, we have a free mulch pile in Cary Park actually that uh, it's off of Plum Street as you come into the park. It has quite a bit of mulch for people to use. I, I'm, I'm there quite a bit uh, during the growing season because I use a lot of the mulch to help keep the moisture in those beds going. Um, but when this mulch starts to degrade, there's a lot of fines in there, I've realized. Oh, it doesn't like me, does it? Um, there's a lot of mulch uh, that degrades over time. And at the end of each growing season, I will throw in that old, that old, old mulch and try to compost it. I try to be very resourceful with the little land that I have. Um, at the end of every winter, I will put that mulch or that compost right back in the beds. I will admit I have gone into this head first without much of a plan. So shameless plug here for our beacon website at the county level. I have now made a plan and it, it just by looking at it, it takes up almost the entire lot of, of yard that I have with what I'm wanting to do in the next few years. Within the next few weeks, though, this is my next task of building the next five beds of, raised, of uh, for my produce. Uh, 20 to 30 barrel loads more of dirt. I have many more to go. 
Um, it's going to take a while for me to get all the mulch and everything that I need uh, to keep it, keep it uh, uh, well insulated so from the dry weather. I know that I have plenty of space still yet to, to get working on, and, uh, but I know at some point I'm going to eventually run out of ground level space. Uh, whether it be too much shade or just too much uh, ground has been taken up by my ability to want to grow stuff on. Well, the next best spot for me to grow is actually, instead of on the ground, the backyard is going up. Being as resourceful as I am, I used my old wood fence posts and I built a trellis system for some black raspberry canes. And that's where this next fun adventure of mine is going, where I will take these canes and I will extend them all the way around in the backyard to continue. Oh, there they are. Uh, it's, it's basically taken over the trellis by now, so it's ready for me to start getting them all in the backyard. But at the same time, I still have some space available around the fencing that I need to figure out what I want to do with. And the next best part, which I, I wish I would have gotten to this, this year, was pallet gardening. These pallets will actually put up right against my fencing to, to use all the space in that backyard as much as I can to grow more and more food for myself so I'm not relying upon the grocery stores as much. Um, but after that, I know that backyard is going to be filled to the brim with plants. It's just going to be a little too much. So the next step is taking over my front yard, which I have to be some way, shape, or form making this more eye appealing than what it is now. That doesn't look very nice, but it eventually be landscaped in a way, gardenscaped in a way, to where I can plant bushes that I know will produce herbs for me, spices for me, whatever I would like, uh, hide it away with some vegetables in the shaded areas. But my dream is eventually for other people to take kind of my crazy idea of, of taking over my landscape and, and putting it into garden use and the city more and more people doing the same thing so we're not relying upon those grocery stores as much. Uh, I know that's maybe a tall task to ask for but uh, it gets my green stamp of a thumb of approval that's for sure. And the big thing about it is I've just seen with how natural disasters have messed with the food chain and our grocery stores that I think this is an option for community resiliency that we really need to take a step on. So hopefully I get to blog about, the, well, I'm hoping to blog about this more, maybe make a TED talk. Heck yeah, that'd be great. So we'll be back for more Talk 20. So thank you guys.